Hey, good morning. It's Tuesday. It's time for our e-blasts. We get a little word out for you here in the, in the mid, towards the middle of the week that hopefully encourage you, also give you some update on things that are happening. Uh, one, first and foremost, this was uh, last Sunday was National Back to Church Sunday. That was an awesome day. It was such a sweet spirit in the services. Uh, lots of visitors, people responded and putting out cards and invites and letting people come and know. And God really honored that. Uh, attendance was, was up about 20, 20, 25%, somewhere in that range. And so it, it, you know, it was well worth the investment of our time that we spent on that. And listen, I know that some of you did put a lot of effort into to, um, inviting people. Maybe those people didn't come. Never, never be discouraged about that. We're always, you know, there's, there's always a time of, of, of uh, planting seeds and there's a time where you know, we're sowing and watering and nurturing the seed. And then there's a time when the, the fruit is, and the harvest is ready. So remember, you're at different stages in these, this area of reaching the world around you. So don't get disheartened. We're all participating in it together. It's all going to come together. God is faithful. Amen. So for those who, who came, I'm glad you were here. I'm glad you got to participate. What a great day in the Lord it really was. So I mean, I'm encouraged. And I, and I hope you were as well to, to be a part of what God was doing. Uh, the response at the invitation time the response to the sermons, the message, the word, the music. Uh, it's exciting when God's people are just doing what God's called us to do. So let's be faithful to do that. Another thing I wanted to just tell you about very quickly was uh, many of you get the prayer list. Now, if you don't get the prayer requests that come out, sometimes it's three a day, sometimes two a day, sometimes four or five a day, that we send out and just ask people to pray. And I encourage all of us to stay, take a moment, when those come across and we're checking the email, to take a moment and pray about them. But one thing that's really blessed my heart, and again, I, I want to thank uh, Lisa Weaver for handling the, the prayer line. Sometimes uh, it's, it's a laborious uh, work, and sometimes it's a little easier, but thank you, Lisa, for what you do there. Uh, Pastor Gary, for working with her in that area of ministry and making sure that all that gets done. Thank you as well. But what I've gotten a lot back this week has been a response of people just saying, here's what God did. Here's how God answered my prayer. Here's what I saw. Now, we know God doesn't answer every prayer in the way that we would like him to personally. We have our own desires, and then there's the will of God. The Bible says we ask anything according to his will. We know he hears us, so it's important as we pray to be seeking God's will as we pray. But man, what the, what has been so phenomenal to me is just to see the multitude, literally many, many uh, people who've responded. And uh, sometimes we get it back on the line to let you know you see the answers, you see the updates. Uh, read those. They're encouraging. See what God is doing and see what he's done. And sometimes when the news is bad on our end, it might be very good for the person that, that uh, has, has, has been prayed for. God's done something other in their life. Uh, sometimes it's taking you home. There is no greater blessing than that. As much as it grieves us on this side of eternity, uh, listen, everybody in heaven is absolutely 1,100% content there not wanting to make a return journey, I can guarantee you, uh, because of the glory of the presence of God. And we're looking forward to that ourselves. But man, God is faithful and God is good and he's met so many things and done so many things. Let's continue to be very gracious and thankful for what he's done. Continue to let us know when God answers those prayers and how he answers them as well. We appreciate it. A word that was on my heart last night as I was praying about what to to share today with you uh, in regard to just in, to encourage you, because that's what a lot of what I really like to do on these e-blasts, just to give you a word. Psalms 37 is what came to my heart. There's a passage that said, the steps of a man are ordered or established, depending on the translations, might say the good, the steps of a good man or a righteous man are established by the Lord, and he delights in him. What that means is that if we commit our way to the Lord, God shows us his way, his will, his purposes. And it says he literally directs our, our steps. His words are light into my feet, a lamp into my path. So that as we walk with God, he gives us clarity and he gives us light. And it says that as we do that, if you read, let me just read you the passage, just, just two verses out of Psalms 37. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delights in his way, the man's way, because he's following the Lord's way. Though he fall, the man, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Let me read it to you from the New Living Translation. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them fast by their hand. In other words, he's saying, if we do stumble, we're not falling where we stay falling. Another passage talks about the, the righteous man uh, falls down, but he gets back up. And he gets back up here because Psalm 37 says he's got a, God's got a hold of his hand. So I, I really want to encourage you to make sure that as you approach each day, I mean, even today, that you're saying, hey, this day is the Lord's day. This is the day the Lord hath made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. My hand is in his hand. I'm going to follow his steps. Now, I know that's one thing to say. It's another thing to do in our lives because we know that there's resistance. 
uh, there's resistance from the world. The world doesn't like the ways of God. You know, there's, there's the in Proverbs talks about the way of the fool and the way of God, the way of the wise man. All right, so there's just two ways. Jesus made it clear, you know, which road are you on, broad road, narrow road. The world is resistant to the ways of God. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna sense that, but you stay committed to walk with God. There's the, the, the devil obviously resists what God wants us to do. Now. And then there's our own flesh, our own will, our own emotions, our own mindset. You know, the mind, the will, emotions can, be, can absolutely uh, oppose God's way at many times. It's the old nature I'm talking about, the flesh, as we call it in the New Testament. So, you know, don't, you know, when God's directing your steps and you perhaps in your own mind think, I don't like that or I don't want that, I don't feel that, uh, you need to go ahead and just walk with God anyway. You need to make the choice. You need to make the step. And the Bible says that as we do that, listen, this, I mean, this is, blows my mind because most of us are so self-condemning. He says that God delights in us. You know, that, you know, that same chapter uh, 37 around verse four or five says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll, you know, he'll give you the desires of your heart. But isn't that interesting as we delight in God that he delights in us? That, I mean, listen to this. He delights in you as you're walking with him. Now, he loves you all the time. But it's one thing when we love our kids. And another thing when we're delighting in them and we're just, we're saying, oh, that's cool. That's awesome. That's incredible. That God do, does hold you in that same regard, that he, he has this passion for you and this love for you. So that as you do, you do what he tells you to do, it delights the very heart of of the God of all creation. I mean, boom, yeah, that, that's a mind blowing. All right. So I just want to encourage you today to realize how much God really does love you and how much he really is holding your hand and how much he desires to give the leadership in your life that just leads you to, to grace and leads you to victory and leads you to where he is. And if you do stumble this process, the Bible says we're not utterly cast down. We're not, we don't fall headlong is what one passage puts it. We fall down. We have the Lord holding us. So we get back up. So if you're down, get back up. If you're struggling, refocus your heart, your mind, your affections on the, on the ways of God. And know this, that the Lord directs your steps today and he delights in it. So you delight in him. He'll show you what his will is and he delights in you. What a boom, man, crazy. Just uh, God loves you. That's all I can say. And I'll close it there. I want to remind you one last thing is that uh, we do have our marriage retreat. Uh, we did have the cutoff, but we do have some rooms available if you want to come. I think we have 30 couples that are committed right now to be there. Man, what a glorious and great time it's going to be. It doesn't matter if your marriage is just marvelous and wonderful. You're going to enjoy coming and, and hearing what God's doing. If you're struggling or maybe all of us have areas we can work on, if we're pretty honest, there's going to be some things that God's really going to help you with here. And uh, I am excited about the conferences coming up. So about eight, nine, ten days away. Get it settled today. Make a phone call. Get the time off. You'll be a better person for it. Your marriage will be a lot better as well. I love you. Praise God. Your church loves you, and I know you love your church. So let's keep pushing forward with Jesus. Amen. God bless you.